it's me, Erin. Thanks for joining us on the More Love Podcast. Do not tell Rebecca, but this podcast is about empathy. She likes people to think she's dead inside, but the truth is she's a big time feeler who has truly helped me uncover that empathy is my superpower. Here she comes. Hey, bestie. Hi, love. What are you doing? Oh, just getting ready to host a podcast. A podcast? About what? A life. Our life as best friends who are more like sisters. Ah, yay! I love us and I can't wait to share our stories with the world. Especially the ones that involve us pushing each other, right? To be our most authentic selves. Oh, man. Okay. I think it is safe to say (laughs) we are pouring from an empty cup today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's been a week. It has been two weeks. Mm -hmm. And today is the cherry. Oh, yeah. (laughs) In fact, right after we walked in. (laughs) Walking in here. It was a lot. Mm -hmm. It's been a lot. I think this might be the best time for me to bring in my room for cream analogy that I like to use because I feel like maybe that's going to make its way into the podcast at some point. (laughs) So room for cream means, do you know when you go to a place like our favorite coffee place, Leaf and Bean, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you go there and you say... Well, you say, you personally say, mm-hmm. hi there. Hi, um, may I please have? Every time. I would like the rainforest crunch, please. <laughs> and um, they're like, yeah, absolutely. What size? And you're like, I'll have a medium. Every time. And then they're like, uh, hot or cold? And you're like, I'll do it hot today. <laughs> right? This is classic. <laughs> and every single time they say, do you need room for cream? And you said, Yes, mm-hmm. I do. Or you say, I got to have some oat milk, please. Mm-hmm. I want almond milk mm-hmm. instead. Mm-hmm. The room for cream part is the important part because when they say, do you want some room for cream? I feel like that is just a life analogy specifically for moms. Mm-hmm. <laughs> At least we can speak from that experience because I try to say constantly, I have to leave room for cream. And what that means for me is I cannot live my life constantly to the max, to the top of the cup, where my energy is overflowing, my commitments are overflowing, my connections with people are overflowing, because then inevitably at that moment, Mm -hmm. when my coffee cup is to the top, I realize, oh, I got to have some cream, whether that be an issue with my child or something that comes up that was unexpected. And what happens when you go to put the cream into an absolutely full cup? Overflow Mm -hmm. all over the place. Well, I dump mine. I dump a bunch of it into the garbage. (laughs) Every time I'm like, (laughs) "Ah, they didn't leave enough. If that's not you. (laughs) Right. If that's not you. You're like, I like you. Excuse me. I thought you said you were going to leave some room. <laughs> Here's that. You fill that up to the top. Mm-hmm. Right. And then they fill it to the top. And then you turn around and just dump dump it right one in the garbage. quarter of it into the garbage can. It's and true. then you're like, I'll put my own cream in mm-hmm. here. Every right? time. Mm-hmm. Story of my life, too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, that's, that's mm-hmm. actually really good. Mm-hmm. I, I really appreciate that. <laughs> so essentially, pouring from an empty cup today and... Mm-hmm. The room from cream analogy. So whenever you hear us say, got to leave some room for cream, Mm -hmm. it means that essentially we need to be making sure that our energy and our investment in what it is that we're doing has some degree of room for the unexpected energy shifts, Mm -hmm. the too much, right? So you're not super overflowing and Mm -hmm. incapacitated. Mm -hmm. The other other cool part about (laughs) you and me is we just like intuitively good cop, bad cop is the wrong analogy, but it's very clear immediately who whomever has the more full cup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the other one immediately has to be like, it's fine. I yes. got this. Oh I got gosh. this and I got to manage it because if I contribute <laughs> and overflow that, then uh, game over. I think this is my favorite example. It was literally last Monday mm-hmm. when the whole mm-hmm. like everything, everything started, right? Mm-hmm. And you call me. Mm-hmm. It's eight forty-seven, mm-hmm. which everyone now knows. Two minutes after the time, and you said, "What are you doing? Mm-hmm. This isn't good." <laughs> and I said, "I'm mm-hmm. sitting in the parking lot at Aldi." And yeah. you 
you said, we're not good. Nope. We're not in a good place. <laughs> we're not. Do- no, no. I, after I said that, I go, were you planning on going in there? And you said no. And I said, well, I do need some coffee. <laughs> Could you go in there and then come to my house? Because you're not OK. <laughs> you are not OK. We're not just going to sit in the parking right. lot at Aldi. Right? right. And then I made you get on FaceTime and I was with you when we went into the store. Because yep. I'm not sure if you would actually follow through. Yeah. Because I was mm-hmm. not OK. I know. I, I was, was not good. Energy has never been in that place before. I know. I know. I know. It, I know. Was it was borderline. I mean, I even texted your husband. I said, and she, I got her. She's over here. I'm not sure when she's going to be home, but I'll just keep in contact with you. <laughs> and I'm going to need you to step it up. Yep, Here's yep. what I need you to yep. do before the end of the day. And right. he was sweet. I he think, did. Didn't he say? He nailed it. I got it. Yep. Yep. We got it. He nailed that's, it. That's the team approach. And I'm pretty sure that at that point, when you told me you contacted him and that's what he said, that I started crying and we were on FaceTime and you said, oh, no, no, we're not. Nope, we're not crying. What are you doing? Let's get out of the car. We're not yep. going to sit in the Aldi parking lot anymore. Nope. nope. All done. And did I get your coffee? You sure, sure did. did. Sure did. I sure did. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So that is one of my favorites that my cup was, you know, barely at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Like it was it was not full at all. Mm-hmm. And you were like, I have some coffee to spare. Mm-hmm. Let me help. The problem is in the last <laughs> two days, both of us have less than half full coffee I cups. I know. And we're doing it. I, I mean, we are pulling it out here, but... It's, it's been it's been tough. It's a lot. Yep. Yep. I think we should set an intention. I agree. I think we should figure out how what's what's the state of mm-hmm. this podcast? What's the state of our energy? And you know the best way to do that. With our tarot cards. <laughs> With the tarot I got them all. Cards. I got them all spread out. Good. So I put the energy in there and then Aaron's yeah. going to shift. You're going to tell me when to stop. No, I know which one uh, I want. Okay. May put your finger on that one too. The one that you want. Is that it? Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. That was not at all where I was okay. going. I'll tell you. I got to close my eyes. Okay, you tell me. I'll it's going to be my middle finger. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Go. Yep. You that's mean, exactly okay. it. I knew it needed to be on that side. Yeah, okay. Okay. So we'll do yours first or yeah, my first? We'll do mine first. Okay, so the intention of this podcast for you is oh, the nine no. of wands. I got the nine of wands again. The nine of wands is good. It's called defense. Great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I got the two of cups partnership. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Now get your little book out okay. and, and read the read little ditty. First. All yeah. right. So nine of wands. Do you realize I always get the wands? I know. Remember the one time I picked three wands, three wands. in a row? Mm-hmm. That was. Well, you are the queen of all things. <laughs> Is that what that means? That's what it means. Oh. All right. <laughs> Meaning defense. This nine sees you exerting yourself, <laughs> exerting yourself to the full, protecting your job, your property, or otherwise defending your actions. I cannot wow, keep I can't. reading this. I can't. With, I can't. This is. Yep. Yeah. This is every morning. Every morning we read this. I'm like, okay. You may have made sacrifices in the past and feel that you need to justify these by staying put. I can't keep reading this. I know. I know. However, you may feel the need to ask yourself if you're holding on too tightly due to fear. Is this this need for constant vigilance an exhausting habit rather than a free choice? Oh, I can't. Stop it. It's an exhausting habit. It is an exhausting habit. It's not a free choice. Do you want the advice? Yeah. Oh, boy. Can you hear this? I I don't know. (laughs) I'll let you know at the end. Protect what is yours by all means, but free up your thinking. No. Create some mental space for the future. No, I can't. Stop it. Did we just talk about leave some room for cream? Which, by the way, when you say the word cream, it makes me think about some other things. It was really (laughs) difficult to listen to you say that. I'm sure you mean donuts. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> that's it. That's it. Okay, let's read mine. Oh my gosh, was that spot on or what? I, I, I and then mine's going to be dead nuts. I know. Are you I ready? Know. Yep. Two of cups. Which, by the way, they look like those things that you that Jesus's blood is in. Mm-hmm. What is the that chalice? called? Chalice. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay. I think of the Holy Grail. Oh, the Holy Grail for Mom. Yep. Indiana Jones. Yes, my daughter just started watching it. She oh, loves yeah. it. Those are awesome. Oh yeah, we're all okay. Partnership. This card predicts love, equality, 
<laughs> the meeting of hearts and minds, which benefits all of your relationships from friendships to romance. It also reveals a commitment or promise, such as an engagement or marriage or an emotional investment in a shared project. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. This is a healing card. So if your relationship has tested you recently, it reveals that all will be well. You can expect someone close to you to show their love. Know that you are trustworthy and dependable. Advice. Appreciate love and trust in your relationships. Well, it was so, <laughs> well, so much <laughs> for, you, for you being dead inside. I mean, is that the whole podcast in one card? It said, I mean, embrace the love, let it in, trust your <laughs> friendships, let the light shine. But think about it. We just talked about the fact that with you, I play good cop, bad cop. And when you are not okay, when I'm never okay. <laughs> but when you're not okay, I'm like, but I am. And I'm going to make I this, this work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's very important to me because, you know. You being the foundation, if you're cracked, it ain't good. I know. It it's actually a good. really weird experience for me to play the cracked foundation. I know. I'm not used to that. Nope. And when when all these Talk happened, about vulnerability. I know. The right? fact that you admitted it to me. I well, I mean, I, mean, I usually do. But, yeah, but this was but next this level. Was next level. I know. I was incapacitated mm -hmm. in my car, mm -hmm. sitting there staring out the front. I know. at all these. And if you didn't live in a different state than me, I would have come and picked you up. My God, you say that all the time. I just want to be clear. It's thirty minutes. That's very far away. My children pack an overnight bag when we're coming to your house for I dinner. Know. It's thirty minutes. It's very far. <sighs> I can't drink my wine and drive home. No, yeah, it's too far for that. <laughs> yep. Yeah, this is fascinating. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe today we could go back to the discussion that we had last session. You know, you love how I like to call them sessions. I know. They're um, <laughs> I'm going to put these right here. The relationship between empathy and vulnerability. Okay. Because I loved having that conversation with Greg. Wasn't I know. he great? Oh, my God, yes. Oh, Greg. Now we're besties on Instagram. You are? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm happy to hear that. Mm -hmm. So I loved that conversation that we had. And then I also remembered after that conversation that I had written down some categories mm -hmm. associated with empathy with vulnerability, okay. empathy without vulnerability, vulnerability with empathy, and vulnerability without empathy. And I think... The going through of those different sort of mm, sex, if you will, mm -hmm. is important. S-E-C-T-S. I can't. I can't. Mm -hmm. Is important for us to sort of better understand the relationship. You know what I'm thinking right having, now. I'm pretty clear. <laughs> yeah. Leave some room for cream. Pretty, pretty clear. And I couldn't think of a better okay. term to use to describe them because I'm pouring from an empty cup at this point. And so, of course, I had to say the word sex mm -hmm. after <laughs> that. <laughs> so I thought maybe we could go through some of these categories, okay. talk about them, maybe provide some examples okay. and talk a little bit about the relationship between empathy and vulnerability in a little bit more detail. Mm -hmm. Does that feel doable today? Sure. All right. So the first thing I have is empathy with vulnerability. Okay. So empathy, let me go back to my notes from before, the ability to understand and share the feelings of another mm -hmm. and vulnerability is a state of being exposed to the possibility of being attacked mm. or harmed. Mm. So empathy with vulnerability. My example for that was a close family friend has a child who's on the spectrum. And my experience of watching him try to engage with other children and have those children not accept him, for me, brings up a tremendous amount of empathy. I feel for him very greatly. I want to just be in his skin trying to help him navigate those relationships. Mm -hmm. But I didn't see that as potentially a time where I was being vulnerable. I wasn't really putting myself out there. I was essentially just having empathy for him mm -hmm. um, or 
would that be, is there vulnerability in that? Because just the process of me being able to have empathy and to get in his shoes is a rather vulnerable experience. Yes. I am not sure if that was a yes or no question, but (laughs) I agree. I'm like, I'm not sure what you, I I just keep going back to, is it with him or was it with, is it with the parents? Hmm. From an empathy standpoint and vulnerability because he's a child, right? I mean, you, you could be vulnerable with a child, but would they perceive it as that or whatever? But when I think about, um, potentially having a conversation with the parents depending on your relationship with them is this is that you said a close family friend right Mm -hmm. someone who you're very close with so having that conversation could be tricky could be the vulnerability aspect yeah um because you can absolutely empathize and you can have have a lot of um conversations around that but then how are they going to do they even want to talk about it? Mm. Do they have their own sets of feelings about it? Do have they worked through that? Are they in denial? Um, are they ready to to tell you how they're really feeling, or are they feeling very protective? Like hmm. those can be tricky, tricky situations, specifically when it comes to talking to a parent about their child, mm-hmm. even when you're approaching from a place of love mm-hmm. and empathy, because. Sometimes that's hard to hear as the person who didn't necessarily ask for it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's one thing to make an observation at a birthday party or a family party and the parents a little bit oblivious because this is just natural. This Mm -hmm. is just how it is. Um, And then for you to bring that up to them could be it could be interesting. It could go one way or the other. So the empathy is the process of acknowledging, wow, I'm feeling for this child and the mm-hmm. fact that he's you know, unable to engage. Mm-hmm. But the vulnerability comes from potentially talking to the parents and saying, hey, I've noticed mm-hmm. that so-and-so has trouble in this particular way. Have you mm-hmm. noticed the same? Mm-hmm. Uh, because that may leave me open to backlash right. in some You're way, shape, judgy. or form. Yeah. I was thinking, too, from the standpoint of that actual example, not bringing in the parents, but with the child, I think you made an interesting point, which is, is it possible to be vulnerable with a child, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so I think that that's very true. If I went up to this little boy mm-hmm. and I said, hey, I'm noticing that, you know, kids are not responding as much to you, or have you tried this, or have you tried that? That might be a vulnerable place for me to be, especially with a child, because mm-hmm. he might not have the social skills or right. you know, uh, expectations associated with those social skills to essentially be able to say to me, oh, thanks so much for that, I'll think about it. He mm-hmm. might say, what are you talking about, right? right. Or he might, he might potentially right. respond in a different, in a different or more difficult way. Exactly, and you just don't, unless you know them intimately. Right. Like you just know their personality. Right. Right. Um, I mean, I guess with a family friend, it would be a little bit different, Mm -hmm. but maybe maybe it's just a change the scenario. It's you're at the park, Mm -hmm. you know, with your child and they're playing and you notice somebody, Mm -hmm. a child who's who's having difficulty. Right. Um, You can approach it. You can go up to them and have that conversation or you could bring your child and say, hey, can you go? Mm hmm. And include them. And then that's a that's a whole nother level of how do you have that conversation with your own child who originally wasn't didn't yeah, have, the awareness. have the awareness and mm-hmm. notice. And then how are they going to respond? Are they going to be like, oh, sure. Or no, mm-hmm. I don't want to. Right. Yeah. So yeah. then you have <laughs> like a whole nother level of of conversation also. What I think is interesting for me, put an asterisk in this, Hmm. is vulnerability does not feel like an option. Mm -hmm. It feels like a necessity Mm. to me. I don't think that you feel the same. No. So in that situation where we're talking about the child with his parent or the child and me talking to the child. You're asking me a question now? You know I have to say something. I know. And I'm not saying anything. Right. I am going to the car and reading my book. That's right. Because you, yes, you're like, I noticed that. Right. And did I, you did you have empathy for it yeah, in this I, fake scenario? Are you yes. aware? I'm very aware and I'm very uncomfortable and I don't. Really? Yes. You're uncomfortable because what? Of what the child's experiencing? Yes. And you're, you have then the ability mm-hmm. to shut off this part of yourself that says, I'm not going to engage with that because is that the vulnerability piece? Yeah, I can't. 
Okay. Isn't that interesting? Turn it off. Right? Yeah. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off. Sawyer, we gotta go. Yeah, <laughs> busy. Gotta go. Right. Oh, gotta look go at the time. Look, look at the busy. time. Oh, that is interesting. Mm-hmm. And here I am. <laughs> I have to talk about Mm-mm. it. Mm-mm. Right? I cannot leave that playground <laughs> if I've not talked to the child or the child's parents or I have not intervened in some way. I know. That's why we don't go to the park together. <laughs> <laughs> Because I can not. I can't. Here, I have the best example of this. Okay, so this is an example of, let me look at my categories here. Empathy and vulnerability. Oh, God. Which which example? What are you giving? I went to Target. Oh, God. (laughs) I was not with you. I know. Can you imagine if you were? Nope. I went to Target. I couldn't even listen to this story. Now I got to listen to it again. Do you remember in the car? 100%. You were like, I'm so uncomfortable Mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm getting uncomfortable again. I went to Target and I'm walking out of Target with my husband and my child and my child's friend. And don't I hear massively loud banging coming from the Target bathroom? Any other normal person is like, gotta go. Mm -hmm. No one. There's a little yelling as Mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, in this case, mm-hmm. you're feeling, are you feeling empathy? No, are you, I'm you're feeling, not feeling like any empathy. there is something not good going on in there and okay. I want nothing to okay. do with it. Okay. Nothing. Okay. God, no. Now, I take all the items that are in my hand. I hand them to my husband and my child and I say, hey, guys, just go out into the car. It looks like I might need to take care of something. Mm-hmm. And I walk right into that bathroom. Of course you do. Like you're, right? the, like you're the owner of Target. Yes. yes. I know. There were Target employees with their... Shirt things on, mm-hmm. standing outside, mm-hmm. right? None of them are going in. No, of course not. No. No, I have to go in. I know. So I, I go in, and there is a young woman. I, I'm when, assuming. Wait, I need to. I need to. When you were telling me this story, yeah. I immediately thought you were going to tell me that you that she was giving birth in the toilet, <laughs> and you assisted. That's where I thought it was going when you originally told me this story. And then I got more uncomfortable when it wasn't a birth. Oh, you wished it was a birth. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. It's fine. Okay. I wish it was a birth because that would have been like, I would have applauded you for doing that. Wow. Thank you. I would have done that too. I know. I know. Yeah. I would have. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. When lots of noise and things are happening in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Right. Instead. I know. It was Mm -hmm. a head banging on the door of the bathroom Mm -hmm. and crying and just someone totally beside themselves. Mm -hmm. And I realize when I walk in there that it is just me and this woman who's in the bathroom. And I say, hey, I'm here. (laughs) Your face. I'm here. You're not alone in here. Right? You're feeling what? I am so uncomfortable. <laughs> and you don't even know what says, this person looks like. No, nothing. No, because they're they're in the stall. They're banging. Their they're head. in the stall. They're banging the head of the stall. I I'm, I, and here's what I'm thinking. I'm here. You're not alone. We're gonna get through this situation, right? And I just need you to know that the presence is here. That 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 we're here. You know, it's just us in here. And she said, "I'm not in a good place." And I said. I can tell, <laughs> right? I can tell. And I said, and you know what? We can get to a better place. Tell me a little bit about what's going on. And I say in this moment, I'm a mental health professional. I'm here. I can help you. Now, that's important to this story in my mind because that establishes trust. In my mind, just by saying, you know, I'm someone who is at least somewhat trained in this area tells you we can get through this thing, right? Right. She immediately started to soften and she started telling me some of the situation associated with why she was in a bad place. One of those items, and there were a few of them, was that she had missed her bus transportation. Now, you know that I am not great about thinking on my feet when it comes to coming up with alternatives, right? Because if you're supposed to take uh, the bus and the bus <laughs> didn't show up, you just better wait there for three hours because I'm not thinking that there's alternative things that can be done because I'm incredibly just clear <laughs> in, in my thinking about what needs to happen. Mm-hmm. And I don't know where this came from, but in this moment, I said, 
oh, hon, that's not a problem. We'll take care of that. I'd be happy to put you in an Uber to get you home. And she said, you would? Now that's all I needed to hear. Because I'm like, absolutely. Is that what it took to get us from this place to this place? Absolutely. An Uber ride, right? So eventually she comes out. And where am I? Right in the middle of the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And I have my arms open. (laughs) It's time for a hug. I can't. It's time for a hug, right? She's in a place. I'm here. I'm ready to support you. I have my hands open. I said, bring it in. Like, like we're on like a soccer team together or something, right? I said, bring it in. We got this, girl. We got it. She comes in. You know, she's crying. We are hugging in the middle of Target bathroom. I can't. You're feeling what right I now? I am. <laughs> <laughs> what part is it? Is the hug? Yes. Why are, you, why are you still talking to her? Oh, she's struggling. She was struggling. But you should have already got the Uber and moved on. Just the Uber and then we're done. Yes. Oh, there's so much I more. Oh. There's so much more there. So we're we're embracing mm-hmm. in the middle of the bathroom. And I said, take a minute. Just take a minute. We're going to figure this out. This is not a problem. We're going to get you exactly where you need to go. She said, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. You know, tells me a little bit more about her struggle. I said, I'll step out of the bathroom. Why don't you just take a minute? And then when you're ready, come on out and we'll talk about next steps. And she's like, okay, okay, I really appreciate that. Well, don't I walk out of the Target bathroom? Uh, No joke. There are three Target employees standing outside of the bathroom. Mm -hmm. They are beside themselves. Of course they They are. They do not know what is happening in Mm -hmm. there. So here I come, walking out of the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And I say, because they're staring at me. Right. All set in there. It's not a problem. Mm -hmm. And the woman says, it's all set in there? (laughs) And I said, yeah, we're all set. We're all set. I said, someone's going through a hard time. It's not a problem. She's going to be okay. I've got it all taken care of. They do not know what to do in this moment, Mm -hmm. right? I don't work at Target. Mm -hmm. Some days I wish I did. Mm -hmm. Well, they probably already called the cops. It's possible. I'm telling you, there's three people that are standing outside. Mm -hmm. They are not sure. Do we go in? Do we not go in? How it has been handled? In this moment, I'm very clear Mm -hmm. that they need to not go in there Mm because I have this under control. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Where's my family? I don't know. In the car. (laughs) You know, who knows what the heck they're doing. Mm -hmm. I I do find out later that my husband, who needed to stay in the car with the children, Mm -hmm. right, was concerned that I was not okay. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So... Did appreciate that mm-hmm. later on, right? In my mind, that didn't even cross my mind. Mm-hmm. I was not even thinking that I wasn't okay. I got this, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I'm standing outside the bathroom. She comes out and I say, you, are you better? You doing okay? She's like, I'm doing okay. And I said, let me ask you a question. How are we doing with food and how are we doing with clothes right now? She's like, food and clothes? I said, Yeah. I said, do you have enough clothes? Do you have enough food? Right? Because I got to go through all the essential elements. I know. I you got know. Maslow's hierarchies and needs working over here. <laughs> right? I got to make sure we're okay. She said, I'm okay. I, I'm okay. I said, I, you know what you don't have right now that you need? Oh, my God. I know she exactly said, what you're going to say. She said, what? I can't. And I said, you need a coffee from Starbucks. <laughs> of course you do. Once again. Yeah. Have you ordered who, the Uber yet? Who? Oh, I, I have it up on my phone. I don't know her address. Oh, okay. Right? Okay. We can't just ask her that. We got to see if no. she needs a coffee. Well, she got to have a coffee. Oh, my God. She's had a rough day. She missed her bus. Right? So I said, we got to get <laughs> we got to get a Starbucks. She's like, really? And I said, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I said, my recommendation is the mocha, <laughs> but you can get whatever you want, you know? So then I ask her for her address. I put the address in. Gentleman's going to show up in like six minutes. Mm -hmm. I said, this is perfect. So we go over to Starbucks. We get the coffee. I tell her she can get whatever size she wants to. I'm immediately thinking of you because this is what happens with us at all times. Mm -hmm. Right? You're like, I need to have a coffee. And I'm like, get what you want. Mm -hmm. Swipe, swipe. Mm -hmm. Right? It doesn't Mm -hmm. matter. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So here I am making sure that this woman has her coffee. Mm -hmm. And she says to me as she's throwing her straw wrapper into the garbage can (laughs) she says thank you for being 
I'm going to get emotional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being so nice to me. Mm -hmm. No one's been this nice to me before. Maybe if you don't bang your head on the <laughs> stall. This is why you have no heart. <laughs> She's struggling. She yeah. said, thank you for being so nice to me. And I thought it's just as simple as making sure that she has her Starbucks, getting her in the Uber, right? Making sure that she's okay. So get her in her Uber. I give her a therapist recommendation to my favorite therapist, downtown Rochester, who I believe is still accepting clients. <laughs> I tell her jokingly, I now know your address, <laughs> so you better follow through because I know where to find you, right? She gives me another hug, which I greatly appreciate. Mm -hmm. Get her in her Uber, give her a little wave, go to my family's car. They're all looking at me <laughs> like I have 17 heads. They do not know what is happening right now. Mm -hmm. My son, always inquisitive, says, Mom, where you been? <laughs> and I said, somebody needed my help, buddy. And that is the story of empathy and vulnerability all at once. How do you hear that? This is a genuine question. How do you hear that and keep walking and not respond? Is it fear? Yeah. Is it, it is. Is it desire to pretend it's not happening? Yeah. <laughs> is it not feeling confident about how the situation would be handled? Like, what is it that keeps not just you, I would say, honestly, a majority of people. Clearly the target employees weren't going to manage it either. True. Yeah, they actually are paid to be there. Right. And they are like, but I guarantee mm -hmm. you, there. This, is, this brings me right back to the RD days when you had to do my job for me. Not adequately trained, quote unquote, because that is not my personality. That is not my go-to. I am not running in the burning building to help people. But in my mind, I didn't do anything overly therapeutic in that case. I no. simply recognized that someone was struggling and I used words right. to offer support, guidance, a hug, mm -hmm. a Starbucks coffee, and a, it's okay, everything will be all right. Mm -hmm. My struggle is that that feels just so innately human to me. Because that's who you are at your core. But then I assume everyone else has that quality no. right and this is where you say to me absolutely not that's why this is your superpower and that's where i remain constantly surprised and confused by just this mm -hmm. simple like human relationship well bystander by standard training, any of any of that. We watch that stuff on TV, right? Where we're like somebody's clearly struggling and people constantly walk by. Not you. Mm -hmm. You're right up in there. And so is that, would you consider that the walking in mm -hmm. in that situation? Is that vulnerability? Yes. Because what if you were rejected? What and if she it, what if she never... called you names? What if she attacked you? What if yep. I mean I could I could Yes. What if she's delivering a baby? I mean, granted, if that were the case, you'd run out and be like, call 911 oh, or yeah, whatever. Like yeah. those, those kinds of situations. But I think that for me is pivotal yeah. when it comes to empathy and vulnerability together. I would have told you empathy is my superpower. Mm -hmm. and, and it is right mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I just do care very deeply. But I think what I lack in recognizing is the extensive amount of vulnerability that I show mm regularly without mm -hmm. recognizing it as vulnerability. I don't call that vulnerability. Mm -hmm. That's in, a good point. In my mind, I just assume this is just what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Why would anyone do anything different, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I don't, when you say there's a possibility that she could have rejected me, this might sound twisted, man, but there's a part of me that's like, if she rejects me, I'm going in harder with more vulnerability. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that fascinating? No, I would that's lean so into that. Absolutely, but but I know you. That that makes yeah. that makes perfect sense because, and again, this is why your career is so. It's it's not a career; it's a lifestyle. But that's a, that's why my lifestyle is my lifestyle, right? Because you don't need to be trained on these things. These are natural. You you're you're curious. You 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 lead from 
curiosity and compassion. And there's always a story behind everything. And what you're presenting is not not real. It's just it's what you're presenting. There's always deeper to it. Um, and so that makes that makes perfect sense. Um, I do not think that that's natural. Hmm. And I, I have to agree with you because I walk around disappointed most of the time mm-hmm. that people aren't responding in those, mm-hmm. you know, particular ways. Mm-hmm. But for me, that was just sort of a bit of an eye opener associated with the difference between empathy and vulnerability. And yes, many can have empathy. You said mm-hmm. you had empathy for the fact that this person is banging their head against oh, the inside of stall. Absolutely. Right? That's terrible. And I feel really bad about it, but I'm not getting involved. But the vulnerability piece of the taking that next step yeah. and running the risk of having that be sort of a response mm-hmm. that you might get is just doesn't feel Mm-mm. like a safe risk to take. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So love that category mm-hmm. that was <laughs> empathy. <laughs> that was empathy Ugh. with vulnerability i got i have like some arrows here that have me a little confused so let me move on to empathy without vulnerability okay here's what i wrote down watching someone struggle to do something like give a presentation, but just acknowledging that that's what they're going through without having to be vulnerable as a part of it. Mm-hmm. Is that a fair categorization? That is empathy. That's where I live 100% of the time. You live in empathy without vulnerability. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 or or acknowledging it or talking about it or telling you that I'm empathetic, like I'm feeling what you're going through. I just yep. process it in my own head and then walk away. That is fascinating. You That's where would have you to go live. up to that person afterwards and be like, you nailed it, even if it was terrible. You mm-hmm. nailed, First, you fill out the comment card <laughs> with all these specific things because you need to make sure that that person was seen and heard so like sometimes even quotes i mean all the things in fact i'm surprised that you don't like record certain things like right so (laughs) fill that out then you turn it in then you need to approach them and then you even go so far as to be like you know what I need you to come and speak to my company like you will like work this person up so much every time yeah Every time. I I love my though, comment is get some training. What? <laughs> I know. Well, because you because do I have empathy empathy. so much. I'm like, you you yeah. could, but here's how you're gonna bite my, my empathy comes out in a coaching, it's even with my kids. Like I have so much empathy for them and I'm like, I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna fix yep. it and I'm gonna tell you how to be better so you no longer need to struggle. That's my way of you know, like the target example girl next time you have these problems we don't bang our head on the door we walk out into the target guest help services and say i just missed my bus and i need help what can i do and i guarantee you someone over there will give you some suggestions offer you some advice all that kind of stuff you need to help yourself yeah that's my point of view and this is (laughs) this is why i love you so much because i think your style right (laughs) The, what is it, empathy without vulnerability, gets a bad rap. Yeah. It gets a bad rap a lot of the time because it's essentially, okay, so she's going to problem solve it, but she must not really care about it. Right? That's not true. I care about it and very you deeply. You care a lot about yeah. it. That's Otherwise, part I wouldn't of the reason why solve. you're wanting to fix it yes. and why you're wanting to put that energy into mm-hmm. it. You know, I never, I never thought of it like that. That you cared a lot or that it's the empathy that without the why, vulnerability? That's why I want to fix things. On that, um, what's that thing called where you have like 36 person, not personalities, <laughs> 36, no, 36 um, strengths, strengths quest or whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, one of my top five is maximizer. Mm-hmm. And that's what a maximizer does. Mm-hmm. And as a person in higher education who worked with students often, I was not the one that was empath. I mean, I was empathizing with them, but I was always like, nope. How are we going to help ourselves? How are we going to make this better? I was not the one that was like sympathizing yep. or being compassionate. Mm-hmm. I was always like, nope, we're going to fix it. We're, we're not going to be in that place. Mm-hmm. 
And you eat, people either liked it or they didn't. And have you personally had reactions to yourself associated with being a fixer, knowing that you have empathy, but like not going to that other place? Have you ever, that vulnerable place, have you even judged yourself associated with how you respond in those situations? I think it depends. It depends. So if I establish, our, let, let's just say, as an ongoing relationship with a student or with a coworker or something, if that person is genuinely growing and moving forward and making changes and and in a better place, I will then have more empathy and sympathize. It's almost like you have to earn it. Hmm. You have to earn it and you have to do some sort of work. You got to have some sort of skin in the game mm-hmm. before I share anything. Interesting. At all. At all. And maybe once you're worthy. Yep. Maybe. Maybe. And then I'll test it for a little while. Yep. And you fail any of those tests. Yep. We're right oh, back. We're done. We're done. Yeah, we're, so. we're never going back yeah. either. I mean, you don't know mm-hmm. you're done, but you've done. Oh, yeah, right. You're, yeah. Done. you're done with a smile. Mm-hmm. Done. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll stop. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so it, it, it depends. Every situation is different. Because I think a lot of the times, even in our own relationship, mm-hmm. we joke, mm-hmm. right, that mm-hmm. you're the heartless one right. and that I'm the bleeding heart. Mm-hmm. And I do think that there's this judgment associated with that where we're like oh my gosh it's so nice Erin's so wonderful she's going to go save the day oh that Rebecca you Mm -hmm. know she is so difficult or she's not going to give you right but I think we found especially over these last two weeks and Mm -hmm. all of the stuff that's been going on Mm -hmm. there is a time and a place and a necessity for each one of these approaches so long as they both come from an empathic place yes Agreed. Right? There's so many times, even when I'm, you know, in Aldi and mm-hmm. want to just wallow in the experience of the vulnerability and where I am, that mm-hmm. you're like, I need you to go get some hummus. Mm-hmm. I need you to go get my coffee. Mm-hmm. I need you to do this and do this. You come over and we're going to do these things. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. You were the fixer mm-hmm. in that situation. Mm-hmm. If we were both wallowers, right. if we were both, you know, in that place or if we were both Mr. and Mrs. Fixits. Right. And none of us were going to that other area i think Mm -hmm. that's part of that compliment but what i realize now has not really been fair is the fact that we often talk about your ability to connect Mm -hmm. your empathy without a tremendous amount of vulnerability Mm -hmm. as a secondary or less than Mm -hmm. sort of approach to handling things and i don't think that's fair Mm -hmm. i think that maybe we need to think about it as a very different way of approaching it as opposed to it's easier to see where my approach pays off in terms of immediate impact. But I would say it's not okay to operate from that place day in and day out. It's exhausting, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. As we've seen over the last couple of weeks, there's a lot of side effects associated Mm -hmm. with coming from a place of empathy and vulnerability together, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But that's what I mean about the judgment. Mm -hmm. I I don't know if it's fair to just assume that you're this heartless biatch over here who Mm -hmm. doesn't care because you do care very Very deeply deeply. yes and i also don't have the most kindest delivery you know i'm not just recently one of our staff meetings you know we're having a conversation and i'm feeling a whole lot of certain ways because my my thought process is just different, even though we're all speaking the same language. My thought process was different. And I literally said, I'm going to say something that's going to come across as very unpopular or maybe not even it may not even be received well. But I have to say it because my I'm coming f- from empathy from you as an owner and my best friend and somebody that I want to succeed. And I don't necessarily I didn't necessarily agree that the direction the group wanted was appropriate. Mm-hmm. And if I said nothing, mm-hmm. I would not be okay. Yep. I would not be okay. And then I would try to talk about it with you and you would be all sorts of confused. And I'm like, I just, I have to put it out there to the group because they have to know 
where where I filter all things through. Mm-hmm. That's that's the only way I could put it. And I said, even even when we're having conversations and I'm saying things to you, I said, I'm not even going to use people's names because it's not about people. Mm-hmm. It's not you're so relationship oriented and I'm so facts is not the right word. I'm so. um What's the word like literal? I don't know. <laughs> Just like. Yeah. Concrete. Um, maybe and i'm like take people personalities names any of that stuff just take it out of there and that's hard for you to do because Mm -hmm. it's all wrapped into one for you and for me it's like no this is very clear and we have to make choices within this this way of doing things versus and then and then filter in your way of doing them but you're going to see it's always going to be a conflict unless we unless we do things a little bit differently. So um, it's, it's not about not being kind or not caring or not having empathy. It's about um, fixing, I guess, (laughs) and making, making appropriate decisions that don't waste time, effort, or energy. I hate wasting time, effort, or energy. I hate it. But you hate it because it comes from a place of caring about people and respecting them. Yes. And where I can relate with this is there are many times that I, I, you've heard me say before as a supervisor, mm-hmm. one of the most caring things you can do for one of your fellow employees or colleagues or whomever is working for you mm-hmm. is be brutally honest with them about their performance and what you need mm-hmm. to see differently, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? That's another area I think we connect because what I hear you say is I care so deeply that I want your success to be yes. an important part of what happens here. Yes. And I want to contribute to that success. Mm-hmm. And if you are not successful, Successful, I don't want to feel like I've led you astray, that mm-hmm. you're a failure or that whatever, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's my parenting style too. I agree. Very Completely. much. Completely. Very much. Absolutely. And I think that without that framing mm-hmm. or without maybe leading first yes. with, mm-hmm. I'm saying this because I care so much about you because you're right back to that staff meeting. Mm-hmm. It was not three minutes after that staff meeting mm-hmm. that you immediately called me and you said, mm-hmm. I'm really sorry for the direction that took in the staff meeting. 100%. But then you said, but I care so much about you mm-hmm. that I needed to make sure mm-hmm. that you were going to be okay or protected 100%. or that this situation was. Mm-hmm. That is the tiniest little degree oh, of empathy with vulnerability mm-hmm. because you're allowing yourself to be vulnerable with me mm-hmm. to say it's because I care about you. That mm-hmm. was an emotional risk. Mm-hmm. I could have absolutely said, don't ever do that in a meeting again as inappropriate. Right. Right. Absolutely. But what did I say to you? I know you love me so much Mm -hmm. and I know that's exactly where it's coming from. And I see you Mm -hmm. in that place Mm -hmm. and appreciate that about you. But I wonder if that's part of the reason why empathy without vulnerability is something that is really a lot of people's MO because they don't have someone on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Who, when they take that risk to be vulnerable, says, I see you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for doing that. I know you love me so much. Mm -hmm. I know that's why you did that. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And just to just to be able to have that dialect. I mean, you've experienced this with supervisors or colleagues or anybody in your life. I've experienced that more often where you are shut down and it's like, no, know your role. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you care, you know, you can have all the feelings and the care and the and the knowledge in the world, but you don't hold the title. So just sit there, whatever. Right. Um, we've all experienced that. So I think I think when you do have an opportunity to be vulnerable and it's accepted and again, the testing. Right. You know, I've, you and I have tested for years of each other. So mm-hmm. it's very easy for us to do that. Mm-hmm. It's very easy for us to say to each other, I'm, I'm feeling a certain way right now. We just had this conversation the other day. My mm-hmm. daughter's going through some things and um, all you want to do is be supportive. And I'm feeling like, you know, a crappy failure and I am doing the best that I can. And reality is, you, you know, you thought I was getting mad at you, but I'm not getting mad at you. I'm being quiet because I don't, I'm afraid I'm doing the wrong thing. And you're like, I'm really not getting mad at you. I'm, I'm, projecting onto these other people, blah, blah, blah. And so it was, it wasn't even about us, Mm -hmm. but you had enough vulnerable, you were vulnerable enough to say, I need to, I need to say what is happening right now. Yeah. It it was a here and now moment, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. And and it was really good because in my mind, I'm like, yes, I feel that tension, but I'm not mad at you. And I'm sorry if I'm portraying that. I'm just trying to ask questions. And so it's, 
thank God you were able to say those kinds of things because it allowed me to step back and go, oh, wow, I didn't know I was doing that. I think that's the, the other thing. People don't know mm-hmm. they're projecting or saying things or their body. We weren't even on FaceTime. No, so I'm surprised. I know. Usually, I was like, that was a first. Usually, that's why you make me be on I FaceTime because you're know. like, I got I to gotta see your reaction. I got to check every little eyebrow right. lift. Right, yep. right, right, right. And yep. you're like, normally you don't respond like this. And I'm like. And what did I say? I said to you. Normally, you don't respond like this. And mm-hmm. so I want to know what I'm doing that's right. triggering the reaction that you're having. Exactly. Right? And I'm it like, wasn't, why are you reacting like this? What the heck's your problem? Why are you? I genuinely, because yeah. I care so much about you, mm-hmm. is like, that's not my girl. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. A, my girl. Angry yeah, right, 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 right now. Right. Why is she angry? And how do I need to, you know, but I wasn't angry take care you. of her? No, I know. And I loved when we talked about that because mm-hmm. we got very much to a place where I remember saying to you so many times, because God, I they don't know you so freaking well. <laughs> yeah, you I even ordered, I was on the phone and you ordered my food yesterday, which is really hilarious because I didn't even tell you that's what I wanted. Oh, yeah. I know. You made it to the restaurant? I know. And then oh, it shows yeah. up. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, Wait, I, yeah I know. <laughs> I know. She's like, are you guys ready? I'm like, yeah, we are ready. <laughs> You're on the phone. I just ordered exactly what you wanted. Yep. Yeah, this yep. is what we're having. <laughs> hilarious. Um, gosh, what was I just saying? Oh, you, um, when I, I got really angry on the phone. Oh, yeah. Oh, I remember because I know you so well. I remember saying, I love you and I know we're going to get through this. Mm -hmm. Just so we're clear, you know, I'm not mad, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just really curious about figuring this out, right? right? Because I knew that if I made that shift into, Mm -hmm. we're going here and now we're talking about the process in this moment, which you've been very clear that you hate, right? Because I don't want to talk about it, right? I know. know. That I needed to provide these prompts for you over and over again, where Mm -hmm. I was like, we good. Mm -hmm. We're all set. Mm -hmm. Love you. It's Mm -hmm. okay. This is, isn't this curious? Look at this. And I think that that, we both have this desire to look at what it is that's transpiring Mm -hmm. between the two of us in any given moment, Mm -hmm. but have that level of trust so much between each other that we it allows for that creativity mm-hmm. and that curiosity mm-hmm. to be able to be played with mm-hmm. as opposed to getting our defenses up being incredibly upset with each other you know just recognizing in that moment but that's where the vulnerability comes in because with you not with most people i'm very okay with being like that is i'm not good at this i don't know these answers i need help I don't like this, whatever it is, I can say those things to you, A, because I know those are the things you're very, very good at. In fact, I think that was the end of the conversation. The conversation was, we're not going to continue to have these conversations with each other. We're now going to approach this as a unit because Mm -hmm. you, you are asking those questions that I don't know to ask, but you're asking me and making me feel like an idiot. So instead of doing it that way, we're just going to go together as a unit. And you can make the doctor (laughs) feel like an idiot. (laughs) Exactly. And so that, that was the aha (laughs) moment, which I was very confused because this entire time, it's not even like we've been separated. You've been, I've had the phone on speaker, all the things. In fact, you come to all my doctor's appointments with me. I know. Remember remember the one time we were at your doctor's appointment? Yes. And the doctor turns to me and asks me questions about what's going on for you. And you're just sitting there like, (laughs) or that time when I cut my finger and decided to go to sleep and you called um, my nurse advice line. Yes. Your nurse advice line Mm -hmm. and um, pretended to be me. Yes. And they asked, when, when was your last tetanus shot? And Mm -hmm. I I with your husband, your off. husband is listening. Yeah, yeah. I spouted off your last tetanus shot like, like to it the was date. my birthday. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure you were with me. And Mark's like, <laughs> "Did you just make that date up?" I'm like, "No, it's absolutely the right date." Mm-hmm. He's like, "You guys are next level." I know. You know when she just got a tetanus shot? He sure do. I had to make sure you were going to be okay. I know. It was I a know. bad finger cut. I know. Yeah. I know. I love this. <laughs> I love this. So essentially, but I think I think a lot of. Women, especially because they don't want to appear less than or not mm-hmm. good enough, even when you have the bestest of bestest, closest relationships. Think about your relationship with your mom, like even your own mom or your whatever. You never want to appear inadequate. So that's where the defenses come in and you don't want to be vulnerable. Is it that? I think is so. Is it that you don't want to feel not good enough or is it this I, I think sense so. of... Um, safety. Does it come but, down to safety? But isn't that not feeling good enough? Isn't that the same thing? 
I don't feel safe because now you're going to judge me because I'm not good enough. <laughs> so the fear is judgment. Yeah. Hmm. I'm not going to tell you my parenting style because if you have an opinion about it, then I'm going to feel like an idiot because I don't feel strong enough that I can defend it. You know, I'm using that as an example. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, we all know you're real clear that your parenting style is next level. Oh, I'm 100% right in everything. In yeah. fact, in fact, you've even come to the dark side when you've attempted all of your therapeutic, loving, empathetic I can't. tactics and realized. I'm surprised you didn't have that recorded the other day <laughs> when I said to you, I'm going to give you a little credit for your parenting style. I know. It's a little more right on than I thought it was I know. before. I know. I know. I will deny that. No, it's only because you've realized that it comes from a place of empathy. You can absolutely combine the two that's where that's where yeah it's beautiful right. i mean well that's why it's nice to be ants right, that's right. That's to right. our to our and we learn littles, from each other right? right you know because your kids come over and they're like i gotta talk to aunt aaron I about know. this right i know and my kid who says what time is dinner here's right. very clearly from you dinner's ready when dinner's ready yeah, right. <laughs> take a seat don't ask and again. didn't ask again that's because right because he's real clear or when he opens so. his mouth i'm like yeah what are you gonna ask yeah, you better be careful. You're gonna ask something because I'm real clear that I told you that dinner will be on the table when it's on the table. Right, right. And I'm like, mm -hmm. about dinner. Right, right. <laughs> or, or when my daughter gets her cell phone taken away and she's yep. like, "Well, mom, what happens if there's an emergency and no one's home?" I said, "You go outside and you ring the ring doorbell, <laughs> and it goes right to my phone, and you can tell me." You have a problem? Go talk to the doorbell. Talk to the doorbell. You're not getting the phone back. Not happening. Right. There's yep. ways around this. But that's why this <laughs> works so well, right? And she's like, it is. oh, okay. No questions. No. Oh, okay. No. No. Nope. Or Taylor, my oldest, will you go with me to the grocery store or will you go with me to the to Target to get some things? And my little one yells, Taylor, I wouldn't do it. You're not going to be getting anything. <laughs> <laughs> she's real clear. But if Aaron wants to go shopping, both oh, of them yeah. raise yep. their hands. Yep. 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 Got to get know. that Put coffee. Put it in the cart. Put it in Put the cart. It in the cart. <laughs> Everybody's getting a slushy. <laughs> right. Right. That's great. Not okay. And, 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 and then when I finally give in, I'm like, well, it's an extra small. Aaron's like, hey. extra large. Yeah, right. I'm like, girls, do you want an extra small? They're like, we want a medium. Mm -mm. I'm like, give them a medium. No. Give oh them a medium. God. They can't. We did some good work here. I know. I know. I mean, from starting and pouring from an empty cup, we really got into some stuff today. I know. Right? Mm-hmm. I hope people see themselves mm. in what we talked about today. Mm -hmm. They'll probably see themselves in me more. I know they than might. You. I know, apparently. I mean guess there's a new show. I mean <laughs> what's that Scott? Change change the intro. Scott, you still with us? Who who are you? Are you the empath? Oh, I dropped out about forty minutes ago. Oh, <laughs> job. I'm kidding. Are I'm you kidding. the are you the vulnerable are, yeah. empathy? Yes, are you vulnerable no, with empathy? <laughs> Aquarius. Vulnerable without empathy or I empathy identified with... with both of you in this situation. Oh, really? Yeah. Would and, you have and, gone and into Aaron... the Target bathroom? No. So Thank you. I, I more identify with Becca than with um, with Aaron because, it, but Aaron, you and my wife will get along famously because you are two peas in a pod. Uh -huh. That's what she would have done. I mm -hmm. love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll bring I her can't wait to, to meet her. That's why Scott and I get along better. Yep. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I forgot uh, to, to start the timer, too, so you guys are actually 10 minutes longer than 60 minutes. Oh, God. Oh, <gasps> this was a long one. Wow. It's a bonus. It's a bonus, yeah. Yeah, that's how we minutes. turn that. That's right. That's right. That's bonus right. material today. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep. I loved that. Me, too. Isn't empathy amazing? Well, we're amazing. I don't know about all this empathy stuff. That's fine. I accept you wherever you are. Oh, God. I love you. I love you too. And if you love us, please like and subscribe to More Love, the Power of Empathy podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. <laughs>